morning everyone. As we come to worship God this morning, let us pray that each one of us may be enabled by the Holy Spirit to take a step forward in our development towards our full potential as children of God. Our first hymn is number 64 of the Father's love begotten. <coughs> mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We join together as we say the words of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second commandment is like namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through our, through our weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. to God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with your unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, your people may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and forevermore. Amen. 
we turn to scripture. This morning's reading is taken from Colossians 1, 15 to 20 in which Paul declares the supremacy of Christ above all things. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The proper psalm this morning is Psalm 104, and the choir will lead us in the psalm.
The hymn is 263, O Lord of every shining constellation. And I've got a ladybird come to join me on the hymn book. <laughs> was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and the father through Jesus was revealed hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What has come into being in him was life, and that life is the light of all people. 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not that light, but he came to testify to that light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave them power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived amongst us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. So as many of you will know, I am studying to be a lay reader in the um, Church of England, and I'm in my second year, so halfway through. Um, And in my studies this term, we're diving in deep into the really uh, big doctrines of the church. The Trinity, atonement, Christology, creation, and eschatology. And I have to confess, I did need to look up what eschatology meant in the dictionary. So I was not entirely sure, but I'm learning every day. And of course, you you learn by teaching others what you have learned. And my son, who's 21, asked me what I'm learning in my course. And we've actually had very deep discussions about things like the soul and whether hell exists, very deep conversations. But by discussing these, I keep thinking about these topics. And needless to say, things that I thought I knew are now being turned over and over in great detail. And I'm glad that God has all the answers. And um, some of them are only questions he can answer. But one of the questions I have, for example, and I'll leave you to ponder with, is why did God choose that time in history for Jesus, uh, the first century, for him to come to the earth. Why wasn't the 1950s, for example? But that's what he did. He chose first century um, Roman world. And we'll be talking about that um, in a bit. But no matter what time he came, the fact that Jesus has come to earth, it changes everything, doesn't it? 
And so I'm going to be speaking on the passage that Tricia read from Colossians. We now have a living God on earth that we can see the invisible has been made visible, as it said in verse 15. And I always find it amazing that in only six verses, we can have so much to know and think about. Now, putting it in context of what was happening, Paul wrote this. He's writing it from prison in about AD 60, 61, 62, in that time frame. Um, and where is Colossia? Uh, it, it's a tiny little village uh, in Turkey, was modern day Turkey, and at that point in time was Asia Minor. Paul had actually not been there, but he knew some of the leaders from there. And one of the leaders had come to see Paul in prison and was telling him what was going on. And basically what had happened, there was a cult that had taken root in the church. And it was so severe that Paul felt like he really needed to write. They had been taught, but they had started to drift. And so the church was actually under attack from false teaching, heresy, things like that. And they were saying that Jesus was not the Son of God. And they were teaching that he wasn't actually there. So Paul felt like he needed to put this right. And, you know, you can imagine at that point in time, it's early days in the church. Jesus has recently died 30 years ago. And they're trying to figure out who is he? What was he? Um, they didn't have the New Testament like we do. Uh, they, you know, had to rely on different things. And, you know, thinking about it, I, it's how do we know what is true? How do we know um, who taught you what to believe about Christ? And how can we actually know and believe on that? And I thought about even how our social media today twists things and thinks about things. What is truth? And so we're fortunate, of course, that we have the Bible as our source of truth. And here's Paul's letter that was written over 2,000 years ago, telling us who Christ actually is. And he wants us to know all aspects of Christ. And so these six verses are a little gem and an insight of what Paul is saying who Christ is. So. What, what is Paul trying to achieve? Why is he telling us this? He's saying that Christ is their anchor that they need to hold on to. And these verses, they were actually a hymn in the early Christian church. And in fact, some of the readings, the other reading, the gospel reading we had in John was similar. It's about trying to teach us who is Christ. So actually, in these six verses, we have 12 things that Christ is. I just want to read through them quickly so we remember. He is the image of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. He is the one by whom all things were created. He is the one who is before all things. He is the one who held all things together. He is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead. He is one who has preeminence. He is the one in whom all fullness was pleased to dwell. And he was the one through whom God has chosen to reconcile all things. And finally, he was the one who made peace through the blood of his Christ. Twelve things that we can know. And so, in summary, what is Paul saying to the people of Colossae at that time and to us today? He's saying this is the non-negotiable truth. Christ is our creator and redeemer. He's also saying that Christ is first in everything. He's the head of the church. He has reconciled all things to himself through his death on the cross. And finally, he's the one and only, the goat, if you know that term, greatest of all time. Paul is saying there's nobody above Jesus. Nobody ranks higher. He is supreme. 
So we need to get to know all of these characteristics. And we need to see him as more than a one-dimensional baby in a manger. So as I close, I did want to tell you some news about where Christ has been making an impact around us. Many of you know we run Youth Alpha, and we've been doing that for a few years, and we've consistently had uh, teens, six to eight teens every year. But tonight we'll have 15. God is moving. And I say, yes, I accept the pizza brings them in, but Christ keeps them coming back. <laughs> so we're, we, please pray that we will continue to support them as the next generation gets to know the true character of Jesus. Lord, help us to see Jesus in all of his glory and help us never to stop being amazed at who he is and what he's done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand as we declare the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, who are our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Virgin, and was made, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death upon the grave. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. We ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken by the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel or be seated for prayer. ever-living God, our Creator and Redeemer. You love us and know us better than we know ourselves. With a word you created all things, and so we pray that you will hear the words of your children as we pray. We give thanks for your creation. We give thanks for your church. We give thanks for the world and its peoples. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world and its peoples with all their needs, questions and longings. So often we struggle to understand the reasons behind the many inhumane acts of violence that have occurred this year and in years gone by. And yet we know that in the midst of such events, your love is shown in the acts of bravery, selfish, selflessness and compassion. We, follow for all, we pray for all who suffer in such dreadful circumstances, for those who are tasked with rescue, providing the medical and community support, and eventually in the long task of reconstruction and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for hearts and minds that recognize the poverty of the rich and the wealth among the poor. That questions assumptions of worth and cherishes those whom the world discards. We pray for your creation. So often abused, neglected, polluted. We ask that you would turn our hearts and the hearts of leaders in the world towards sustaining our planet, not destroying, but seeking to care for it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those in need in our own community, the sick and the dying, the elderly, the housebound, and those in care homes, hospitals, hospices. And we thank you for the work and devotion of those who care for them. We thank you for carers whose love and compassion bring both material and spiritual comfort at times of need. We thank you to those who go and simply listen. We raise before you now those for whom prayer has been requested, both on the notice sheets and in the prayer box. And we name before you those whom you have laid on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the wisdom that sees time in the context of eternity and death as a gateway to heaven. Merciful God, be close to those who feel the pain of grief at the loss of loved ones, whether recent or as each anniversary passes. Help us to support those who mourn with our prayers, with words of comfort and with practical help as they struggle to come to terms with their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We pray for wisdom that we may live simply and thankfully, that we will rejoice in all that God does both in us and through us. We pray together. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your, of your Son, son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled each one of us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Peace, peace, peace. Yeah, you can do it. I'm going to use this one. Um, but you can still sing that. The hymn is 254, 
for the fruits of his creation. Thanks be to God. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Ever living God, we have known and we have heard that you are the creator of the ends of the earth and your understanding is unsearchable, your power to the faint and strength to the powerless when your people grow weary is real. You lift them up in Christ with wings like eagles and when your church falls exhausted, you send your Holy Spirit so that we may walk and run and play with you. In your strength we come, not in our own strength, 
by the depth of your mercy, you turned the agony of your son's cross into the grace of resurrection. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, with archangels and with all the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending praise. Everlasting God, in Jesus you enter our home. You take us by the hand. You lift us up and you give us life again. Come amongst us now in the power of your Holy Spirit that your people may be sanctified and these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your son Jesus Christ who at supper with his disciples took bread he gave you thanks he broke the bread and gave it to them saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me after supper he took a cup. Again, he gave you thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Ever-loving God, everyone is searching for you. We seek you out in solitude. We long you for you to be in our company. We hope for you in times of distress and we ache for you in the darkest moments. Meet us in our suffering and in our trials. Cast out the demons that beset our public life and dog our personal struggles. Heal us when we are stricken and hopeless. Raise us up when we are faint and weary. Hasten the day when every enemy will become a friend in you. Every hunger will be filled in you and every tear will be comforted by you. By the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with the Father, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. May this mingling of the consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be unto us who receive it an approach to everlasting life. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but only say the word and your servant will be healed. the body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and amongst all those for whom you will pray this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim. The hymn 627. peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.